Hey, this is Mike Renoir, Northwest Fight Scene, NWFightScene.com. Uh, here with Ian Loveland, man, here at the Sports Lab in Portland, uh, the Barn Owl. Ian, how you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Real good, real good. Now, uh, you just uh, coming off a hard sparring session, uh, Tyson Nam, uh, here at Sports Lab. Uh, talk about working out here now. You, you've been with Sports Lab a little, little, little while now. Talk about uh, your training here. Um, training's been going great here. Uh, I've got some familiar faces that I've been training with for years, and then some, some new additions that have helped me out a lot. Um, coaching is, is top notch, and uh, I think I've been progressing a lot since this thing uh, came together, since I started uh, training with these guys, and uh, I've had a great time. Right now, uh, Andy Minsker, uh, the, the boxing coach, your hands coach here, uh, some real specific instructions uh, during the sparring session. Uh, talk about him as a coach. Uh, Andy's, uh, he, he's an amazing boxing coach. Uh, he's so technical. And uh, since I've been working, working with him, I, I, my striking's cleaned up a lot. And, uh, you know, he's helping me uh, not use as much energy and a lot more accuracy and get more power, you know, with less energy expended. So it's going great. All right. Now, uh, obviously, this, this kind of displayed itself uh, this year, earlier this year at the Tachi Palace. Uh, you had two fights there. Picking up your belt against uh, Crispum, and then uh, following it up against Casey Olson, both both knockouts more or less, uh, and your hands just look great. Uh, uh, talk about those fights. Um, well, both those fights uh, pretty much were perfect for me, and I think that has a lot to do with uh, the preparation uh, for those fights. Everything went perfect, and uh, you know, those were some of the best training camps I've ever put together. I think the last one with Olson was the best training camp I've ever had, and, and uh, the results speak for themselves. Right on. Now, uh, then th this fight lined up, uh, 2012, uh, Bail Tudo. You have a fight coming up here December 24th in Japan. Uh, talk about how this fight came together. Uh, well, uh, my manager called me one day and said, hey, you want to go to Japan? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I fought in Japan one time. And uh, I thought I was going to fight in Japan. I came up with a loss. Uh, maybe that was my third pro fight. And uh, that was probably five or six years ago or something. And I've wanted to go back and kind of avenge that ever since. So I jumped at this opportunity. Uh, now, have you heard much about uh, this this fight card uh, or you know this organization? What do you know about them? Well, I, I, I didn't know anything about it, you know, when I took the fight. But since then, it, it's looking like it's going to be a real good show. I guess you know, going up in the nineties or whatever. The Valley Tito Japan had some big name guys, you know, uh, like Randy Couture and Nixon Gracie, and a lot, a lot of people have fought on these cards. And it's kind of cool that they're resurrecting it, and I'm going to get to fight on it. So I'm excited. Oh, awesome. Now. You're fighting a, a kid, uh, it's Joji Horiguchi, yeah. uh, kind of a young guy. Uh, he's out of, uh, was it Crazy B? Uh, he's trained with Kid Yamamoto. I watched him in a tape on him last night. Uh, he, he has knockout power, you know, a lot of, lot of energy. Uh, I don't know if the, the, the level of opponents have been, uh, who you face, obviously. Uh, talk about him as an opponent, what you know about him. Well, um, you know, I've watched some film on him, and, uh, you know, he's. he's uh, Kind of a, a, a firecracker, just, just throws for broke, and uh, he's been doing a good job putting guys away. So uh, I mean, the main thing you got to watch out for is, is just wild punches. But you know, I faced guys throwing wild punches before. I, I, I don't think he's faced guys with the uh, technical ability that I have or the size. Right. So I think it's going to play to my advantage. Well, oh, awesome, awesome. Now uh, let's talk about uh, your stint with the UFC. Uh, it, you know, going one and two in your last two fights, uh, Benavidez, Bene, Benavidez and uh, uh, Jabwin. Uh, talk about those fights, what you learned from them, and, and uh, how, how it made you a better fighter today. Well, I think uh, definitely those losses brought me here. I'm looking for you know, a change in, in, in how I was preparing for those fights. And, uh, you know, it's hard losing those fights, you know, at that stage, and I worked, you know, hard for a long time to get there. But, you know, in hindsight, you know, it was the right thing. I, you know, but, you know, I squeaked by a little bit longer and found out later on and wasted that much more time, probably would have been a worse place. So, um, it's good that I'm on the right, right track now, get back in there, and, and I think it'll be ahead of the curve next time. Right on. Now, uh, do you feel like you're a bit in exile when you get when you get cut from, from the UFC? I mean, how, what was that process like for you? I mean, you know, obviously disappointing, but you know, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think uh, you know, I'll be able to put them in a position where they need to take me back. I think you know, I'm gonna keep winning fights and uh, you know, being exciting, knocking guys out, and the fans are gonna want me back. And the UFC is 
Right on. Now, uh, when I was watching the Tachi Palace fights uh, early this year, uh, I, I think uh, both fights, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the announcers or the commentators kept on mentioning the, the big tattoo on your back. And they said, look at that trout, look at that trout. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. That ain't no trout. That's a steelhead. Yeah. Uh, and I know you're a big, you're a big fishing guy. Uh, this kind of weather where it's raining and crappy, people are going, oh, my God, you're probably going, I want to get out in the rivers. Yeah, well, I, you know, my fishing career is kind of on the downward slide right now as, as my training is, is, is taken off and, and, you know, doing three three training sessions a day doesn't leave a whole lot of time to sneak out to the river. But, you know, I need to make that money now so I don't have to fish in the rain when I'm retired. I'll be fishing in Mexico, I'll be fishing in the Bahamas or whatever. All right on. You know, get back to it in the long run. <laughs> now, uh, in terms of uh, fishing steelhead, uh, do you prefer to... Uh, when you when you fish, do you catch and release or do you keep them? Oh, I'll whack catch and fish if uh, I feel like I have enough energy to clean it and cook it, which not a whole lot. You train or, or you you know you go fish, sneak out, go fish afterwards. Sometimes it's pretty lazy. But I try to whack the hatchery ones when I can. Right, right on, right on. Well, hey, I appreciate your time, Ian. Uh, we look forward to seeing you fight. Now, this fight uh, is it going to be able to be seen in the states, or are we going to kind of have to wait for it to come online somewhere? I, you know, Hopefully. Uh, so anyway, any sponsors and anyone else to thank for this fight? Yeah, I want to thank Sports Lab, um, and all my training partners, and uh, my coaching staff, Phil Claude, Andy Minster, Trevor Bunnell. Uh, things are going real good for me right now, and uh, just owe it all to them. All right. Well, you heard it here. Uh, Ian Loveland, Sports Lab in Portland. Thank you, sir. Thank you.